I got a DM from a social media group that has some decent following asking me, we would like to interview you regarding your thoughts on VTubers. Do you have time? Do you want to join? And I say, yeah, sure. I was kind of excited because not many people that I know seriously trade virtual streamers, especially Japanese-based VTubers as a serious medium that deserves in-depth discussion and study. In the meantime, don't treat it as a, a niche market, uh, otaku targeted subculture thing-ish. Like really a lot of stereotype going on, like, yeah. So I'm really curious about what they want to know from me and why would they want to know something about VTubers. In case you're wondering why they interview me, I'm a drama and film student who's really interested in manga, anime, VTuber. I want to put my obsession into good use, so I started writing and doing research about VTubers and Japanese culture. Mm, I guess they noticed me from there, and you can check out my earlier contents to know about those. Back to the interview. She gave me some overall questions and we had a phone call the next day. Question like, who do you like the most? When did you start to like? and some less personal ones like, what is the charm of virtual streamers? How are they different to common streamers that don't have a 2D or 3D model? Well, I have to say this people's most frequently asked questions about VTubers. Everyone might have a different answer. I covered those questions in my earlier videos and I will continue to answer them when meeting new contents and new ideas. Throughout the interview, I would say I answered most of the questions um, with preparations and confidence, but there is one. There is one question. I just, I just can't answer. The interviewer has a broader interest in the virtual streaming industry as a whole, but in my view, uh, there are two main categories of the virtual streamers that are kind of opposite to each other. When I think about virtual streamers, I mainly talk about Japanese-based VTubers that are designed in Japanese manga drawn style and have convincing character stories that they need to maintain and obey. The other one is virtual streamers who are using the avatar as a direct representation of themselves. Um, there was no character, and um, even there is, um, the character functions as a prop or device to help them convey enticing content. She asked me, what if your favorite VTuber become 3D? With the newest technology, her models perfectly smooth and vivid. They become less like anime characters, but Western gaming character design. By then, she would be more like a real human body on screen. Would you like her? Would you like her more? Or would you like her less? I realized that I was a bit afraid of this question, and I also know that I won't be able to find the answer unless I can identify my fear. At first, I thought my fear would be something related to Uncanny Valley. Going further with the possibility that the interviewer provided, the VTubers would look quite similar to human, but still different due to potential technical issues. And our clear understanding of the fact that what we are seeing, which is an artificial model, no blood and bones, just materials and data. However, something tells me it is more than that. The interview ended our day, and she recommended me a virtual streamer that she's been watching, who is actually the inspiration of the question she asked called Cold Mickle. And she asked me, like, what's my opinion on her and how is she different to the VTubers that I've been watching? Hmm, and finally, I can say the sentence without having the worry of offending any other VTubers. I have never seen a VTuber like that. She's different. The technology is so complex, immersive, and allows so many more possibilities. Her model, together with her virtualized interaction with her audiences, are otherworldly creative and innovative. The technology alone is groundbreaking for my understanding of VTubers. Though her contents are probably not the ones on the internet that attract me the most, but I'm stunned speechless watching everything that she's presented to me. I respect her as a content creator. Trapped in the VTuber rabbit hole for so long, somehow I accepted the first category which put characters in front of human as default and right, as things should be. Unlike popular VTubers who enhance their charm through borrowing the charisma of the two-dimensional world, Cold Miko's contents are able to cross the dimensions, or the boundaries and distances that's necessary for preserving the charm of two-dimensional world have not been a primary concern for her at all. The person and the avatar could be presented side to side. Audience could literally change the content of the stream, changing the body shape of the streamer, 
make tags shown on her face and body. With VR and other technologies in the future, we will be able to have our own virtual bodies to interact with these dreamers in the same virtual space. After knowing this mind-blowing code Miko, the interviewer asked me again, what if your favorite VTuber become like her? I know she's asking about the technology. Uh, I just remember one time when my favorite, one of my favorite VTuber got a, a model update. Mm, she can then move more smoothly with more movement. Me and the whole fan community got so excited, like... But later I figured, isn't that just, just a few more angles to her face? Why would I have the, somehow have the feeling of seeing my own sculpture come into real life? I will probably have more ideas on her when she has a 3D model, but so far, judging by that experience, I would say probably I will look forward to that. I will definitely welcome model updates on them. I'm, I can't wait to see more possibilities. However, I can only accept the hypothesis of my favorite VTuber having an otherworldly enhanced body. But I cannot accept or cannot imagine if the hypothesis ignored the significance of the character, only focusing on the changes the technology is going to bring. VTuber avatars provide artistically perfect body and face. They're always in the perfect makeup and costume. The polished, beautiful avatars provide shortcuts for audience to stop judging and picking, exclude most of the issues that prevent people from getting to know someone's personality and content. Together with their character stories and the fictional fantasies audiences are able to imagine of them. Oh dear, what excites a fictional fan more than seeing character come into real life? While being closest and intimate to audiences as they possibly can, they remain fictional in terms of character and real as person. The pairing of the character and the person is the key to the final production. But imagining them in a high-tech body the technology don't really contradict to fictionality and humanity. They can make impressive combinations, actually. But in this case, if it's their avatar and the technology that shine the brightest, if their content is mostly about how they present that content, which is the technology itself, the character is merely a costume that signifies difference and virtuality, but does not really remind me of a vivid character performed by a person that seemed to be really existing and charming. Somehow I feel insecure to like her. That's probably why I was so alarmed when hearing that question. I'm sure that's not the interviewer's intention, but at the moment I felt forced at the position to divide, compare, reevaluate two segments that form VTuber. The MIIs are inherently integrated. It feels like the dehumanization of their characters. So the final answer that I give her is, I would definitely look forward to more improvements on their models. But no matter how good their model is made to be, I cannot accept VTubers streaming without a solid character. They must have efforts put in to try to make people aware of the fictional dimension of their existence. Actually, I cannot imagine a VTuber out of their current performing. For so long I've been watching VTubers, everything I know about them are from their characters performing. Even there are out-of-character moments. Fun fact. Our uh, VTubers' personal moments are called out of character, but their character modes are never called out of person. I see everything about them with their character facade. My perceptions of them are always influenced by their characters, to an extent that I cannot divide them apart and analyze them independently. But my mind is always open for change. I will definitely look forward to more and more future virtual streamers that could offer content that I was not expecting. I'm always ready to be surprised, so please go ahead. And... I really um, can't wait for what my favorite VTubers could do with their future enhanced bodies and their 3Ds are pretty close, like I was saying. I I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. And somehow I wish I could be a part of this industry. And that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you on the flip side. <laughs> that that's Kelly's phrase. Um,